Yes, brothers and sisters. Hope everyone's well. Right. I thought I'd come on quickly before I go to work. Talk about this shadow bacon. Right. Now, <clears throat> I was scrolling yesterday and a live of his come up. And I pressed the sound icon in the corner. The third, first thing I heard was... Diddy Christie this, Diddy Christie that, right. <laughs> so I tried to jump on the live. I was in one of the moods where my brain was firing on all cylinders. You know, I've got this weird brain, you know, it's up and down. But yesterday was one of them days where I was like, I was just going to go on and tear this man to pieces because what I know now about what's been said in court, these transcripts and that, it's just, he's got no chance of winning a verbal spa with me. You know what I mean? And he knows that. That's why he ignored me. For the best part of 25 minutes while I was persistently trying to get on his live. Flat out ignored us, right? Soiled his knickers, right? Now, <clears throat> if you were a person, it's hard to relate to this wrong one, but if you were a person, forget what he's done, if you were a person that really wanted to fight somebody else and was constantly tagging them and talking about them constantly, and then they were in your comments, say, all right, then let me on your live. Wouldn't you let them on, you know? The mere fact that he, you know, shat his knickers tells me that the man's got no balls, which we know, but he's also got no, you know, like spontaneous banter crack. You know, he just, I think everything he says and does is kind of semi-rehearsed. You know, he has sort of a rough script, I think, what he sticks to because when it comes to shooting from the hip, off the cuff, you know... He really did shit his pants, you know. And so then I'm, I had a live of my own, which went on for, I don't know, the best part of an hour. And there was an open invitation for him to come on there where I would have tore him verbally to shreds. And he knows it, you know, so he never come on. He did comment in my, uh, in my live anyway. But listen, he's further gone on and suggested that there's going to be a fight between me and him. Listen, nothing's changed. There will not be a fight between me and and that wrong and you know i won't put a round coin in his pocket now i made myself a promise a few weeks ago wherever i see this bacon wherever i see him or let's just say that i hear that he's in the uk with whoever wherever whenever i made a promise to myself that i'm going to go down to wherever he is and i'm going to stand him on his head right I made myself a promise that's what's going to happen if he's ever on these shores or if he i mean it was only two weeks ago it, it was coming to me house to doorsteppers. You know, I don't know what's happened there. But this is often the problem you get with these online, you know, types. I can't speak for everybody, but with this individual in particular, you've got to remember it's a man with no friends. It's a man with nothing whatsoever going for him in his life, apart from what's on the screen in front of him. YouTube is his life and whatever other social media platforms he's on, you know, his friends are on there, his support's on there, his wages come from there. You know, there's nothing outside of YouTube for this bacon. He has no one to protect, no one to provide for, no woman, no friends, lives at home with his mum and dad. You're talking about a man that's in his mid to late 30s that has nothing apart from a phone in his hand from which his life consists, yeah? So, this is probably the reason why he cuts his own hair, because he's not welcome in the barbers. You know, I can imagine it's the same reason he drinks at home, because he's not welcome in the pub. The same reason he trains himself in a mirror, because he's not welcome in a gym. You know, a coach wouldn't want him around. I mean, I've got three daughters, you know, two of them teenage daughters, you know, what What would I, what kind of person would I be to be putting money in your pocket and to be putting you on a show or, you know, <laughs> it it's just beyond belief, you know, the fact that I've invited you on to tear you to bits and now you think there's a fight going. Listen, this is the problem, you know, that you get. They don't have outside interest, you know, they don't have a job or gym time, or children, you know, to 
to put the main focus into. You know, I tried saying it yesterday. And I've, tried, I've said it many times. If you can get things right at home, home is where we spend most of our time. This is what counts, home. If you can get your home life right, i.e. your loved ones, your woman, your kids. If you can come through that door on a night and your kids can embrace you, and you, and, or you can kiss your woman and your kids a kiss on the cheek on the way to work, and you can kiss them again when you come back to work, and you can get that, that unity going within the family, that is what counts. That's wealth. That is true wealth these days. It's where you spend most of your time, so get it right. Get it right. And once you've got that right, see all these external problems, see all this other stuff in your life, relationships, work, external things, they mean less and less. They mean less and less and less the more you get it right at home, right? Now, in reference to this bacon, he'll never get it right at home. He lives with his mum and dad. He doesn't have people to protect and provide for, you know, and, and it does make a difference. You have to put your interests where they count first. Everything else, this, this social media, this video I'm making is purely because I can. It doesn't mean anything. It has very little relevance in the grand scale of things, you know? Life itself is at home. Wealth and success is measured on how you treat at home, not how people receive you online, okay? Okay, have a beautiful day, everybody. Bye-bye for now.